Today we're in the archaeology lab at Ferry Farm again. I'm here with Lauren Jones and we are going to talk about mending using archival glue. We're going to make archival glue to put back together our tankard. I'm going to make a 35% solution of B72 in acetone, which means I will be measuring out 65 milliliters of acetone and 35 grams of B72. We use a slow dissolve method here, and I'm going to be making a pouch like this one to suspend in the acetone. Now, Lauren, could you tell me exactly what archival glue means and why we use it? Archival glue is gonna have to have a few basic properties. We want it colorless, chemically stable, so it's not gonna change form or degrade. We want it removable, which is really important. So later down the line, if we wanna take the object apart or if a better glue is found in the future, we can always do that. Mm -hmm. And safe to work with, so it's not dangerous. I'm gonna suspend this in the jar so it just touches the acetone. Acetone is a really good solvent. So overnight, all of the B72 will be dissolved. This is a really controlled way of doing it. This is the glue we just made, and it needs to sit in a ventilation hood for 24 hours to slowly dissolve. This I made earlier, and you can see it's much thicker. This is what we'll be using to mend our tankard with. This guy can just get, it's empty now, and that just gets discarded. Our glue is almost done, it just needs to be uh, mixed really well, and we're gonna use our magnetic stir for that. This is our magnetic stir, and this is our magnet. We're gonna pop this in our archival glue solution, and start slowly. It's gonna sit on there for about five minutes and stir. This lets us be really precise about how long and how fast we mix our glue. Our glue's all done and we're ready to mend our replica tankard. If this was an actual artifact, we would fill out lots of paperwork and take before and after pictures. I've got my two pieces. I'm going to apply a small amount of glue. Lauren, why do we make this in-house? I mean, it takes about 24 hours from start to finish. It's not, you know, mm -hmm. a, a non-labor intensive task, so. Yeah, you can buy it, buy it pre-made. Uh, we prefer to make it in-house because it's cheaper, a little bit cheaper, and we can tailor the glue to the specific project. So a big, heavy jug is gonna need a thick glue, and a delicate teapot's gonna need a really thin glue. I'm gonna let this sit overnight, supported in our bin of micro glass balls. These won't leave a residue, like sand, but do properly support our object so it can dry correctly. It's a week later and I'm done mending our replica. If this were a real object, it would be ready for display. And speaking of which, we have two examples right here, which have been mended from archaeologically excavated sherds from historic Kenmore. We have a pearlware slot bowl, which is hand painted, and we get a good idea of the motif on this vessel, and you can visualize the whole form very easily. We also have the lower half of a Vesterwald jug, and what's really exciting about this is that once we mended it, we got a better idea for what the overall design on the vessel was. In this case, it's the lower half of a bird. And whenever we compared these to shirts that had been excavated from George Washington's Ferry Farm, we noticed that the same motif is on vessels from that site. So there's a material culture connection between the two Washington family households.
And really what this signifies is the culmination of years of work, from the shirts being excavated in the field, to the time that they're washed, cataloged, and mended, and at the end of it, and this process can take years, we have these whole vessels that we can display to the public.